Welcome to Cinema's Underbelly, the channel where we dive into the deepest, darkest trenches of the underground to analyze and review the most obscure, obscene, and controversial films that cinema has to offer. I'm your host, Jonathan Doe, and today we'll be reviewing the elusive and infamous Charlotte's Net. Charlotte's Net is a 2021 Australian found footage film written and directed by James Dobbins Jones. The film has garnered quite a notorious reputation since its release for its use of real war footage collected from the internet, ranging from drug cartel beheading clips, puppy stomping videos, and ISIS propaganda. The film follows two friends, characters named after the actors who played them. Phil, played by Phil Bates, and James, played by director James Dobbins Jones. The interactions between these two characters is quite divisive, with Phil relentlessly being tormented and bullied by James, leaving me to wonder why Phil keeps coming back to endure such abuse. As the film progresses, and we get to know these characters a little more, this question becomes even more prominent, as it becomes apparent that the two don't even share much in common. Phil seems to be your pretty typical run-of-the-mill dude. He wants to play video games and watch funny videos on YouTube. Meanwhile, James' character is your typical edgelord, who seems like the type of guy who found bestgore.com in high school and decided to make it his whole personality. Which unfortunately is the kind of vibe that this film gives off in general. At seemingly every opportunity the film squeezes in dialogue to make references to various shock videos and exploitation films. Which feels more like the director doing some kind of weird flex instead of advancing the story as it always comes off feeling forced, out of place, and kind of cringe. So did you get my message last night? What? The link I sent you. No. What, you didn't get it? Yeah, I got it, but I ain't clicking on it. It's from Facebook, you fucking dick. Yeah, I remember the last time you sent me shit from Facebook. What, two girls in, one girl? No. no. What the fuck is that? Was it one guy, one jar? What the fuck are you on about? Ah, uh, Mr. Hands? Oh, some sick fucking horse. Yeah, that's definitely Mr. Hands, bro. You're fucked. Your sister seemed to like it. <laughs> You're so funny. No, seriously, man, your sister actually thought it was fucking hilarious. Fuck off! I'm just saying, she's got a bigger dick than you, bro, and she's like, what, 16? Oh, uh, have you seen Pain Olympics? Shut up. Uh... What about three guys, one hammer? Fuck off. One lunatic, one ice pick. Why the fuck do you have all this shit? Don't fuck with cats is pretty good, Phil. I'm talking about why don't you have nice shit, like Beat Saber, something that's actually fucking fun. The Walking Dead VR is pretty fun. I don't know what you're on about. Isn't there anything else? <sighs> um, I got... Cannibal Holocaust VR? No! What about Human Centipede VR Double Deluxe Edition? That's pretty good. Something nice, for fuck's sake! Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, hold on, cunt. Just... Essentially, the first three quarters of the movie consists of Phil and James hanging out with each other. James relentlessly berating Phil to watch real gore clips or to go on the dark web with him. Phil inevitably giving in to the peer pressure and then angrily storming off after he sees something disturbing. This is how these characters are introduced to us at the beginning of the film. Hey, Phil. Phil. For fuck's sake. You walk a fucking run for you. Oi, just stop, man. Chill. Chill. Look. Look, man. All right. No, that was fucked. But also how the next scene ends. What the fuck? Yo, 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 you big man. And the next one. What the fuck? What? What? I fucking told you! I fucking told you I didn't want to do this shit! Now! Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Whoa! And the next one. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Whoa. Uh, what the fuck are you doing, man? Yo, why'd you chuck my shit out? 
Yeah, dude, 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 what the fuck? Fuck off, dude, yeah. dude, fuck off. You get the picture. Additionally, within this repeated formula, we are shown arbitrary random clips of real gore footage, which breaks up the monotony a bit, but unfortunately also feels like it's genuinely its only purpose in the film to begin with. Throughout these interactions, James is also repeatedly pulling pranks on Phil. In one scene, James tells Phil they are going to play Beat Saber on VR, but exposes Phil to a gore mixtape instead. Wait, so I'm playing Beat Saber? Yes, you fucking are. <laughs> yeah, boy. Let's go. Alright, finally. So, this is should. should. Alright, you're about to enter the world of Beat Saber in three, two, one. In another scene, Phil forgets his wallet, so James defecates into a bag, puts Phil's wallet in that bag, and then tosses it to him. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I got it. Here. It's in there. It's in there, man. <laughs> Thank you would be nice. Yeah, um, um, I'll, I'll see you next week, eh? All right, I'll see you, dude. So later in the film, when Phil gets visited by an intruder in the middle of the night, it is unclear whether this is a real threat or James just pulling another one of his pranks. What, you think that's me or something? Why would you fucking do that? Whoa, I so heard you noises. Think it's me. That was not me. Fuck off! Look at it. You think I'm gonna come back at 4 a.m. after you fucking kicked me out? Do you think off you're fucking funny? It's not. But when the intruder comes back the next day, while James is visiting and steals Phil's dog, causing the two to realize the situation is real, they follow in an effort to retrieve Phil's pet. So, wait, hey, your dog. Is, no, oh, no. dude, dude, oh, dude, look! <laughs> dude! What the fuck? Holy shit! Fine! Oh! Hold up. Oi! This leads the two boys to an abandoned house. In the house, they discover a television playing in another room. They decide to investigate and discover that the TV is playing puppy stomp porn. Despite the film obnoxiously establishing James' character as this edgelord real gore enthusiast, he seems to be sickened by what he sees being played on the TV, which seems really out of character for me. I won't go too much further in depth regarding the film's climax, though I will say it is quite predictable and pretty standard for a found footage film. The one semi-unique trick that the film pulls off is blending real gore footage into the character's actual demise, which I found both clever, but also a cheap cop-out from the filmmakers having to use any kind of special effects themselves. The film also can't help itself from squeezing in one more of James' movie name-dropping monologues before letting the credits roll. Why don't you just rent Cannibal Holocaust? No! You said you'd think about it, come on. Yeah, but then you told me what all the shit that happens in it. You know what would be awesome, man? If there were more movies like that, to have that content in a movie would, would practically be the most extreme form of fucking art. To have something actually killed in a movie with the plot direction, composed fucking music playing in it, that's like a dream fucking come true for fucked up people like me. But what happens if that was you? What? If you were the one being killed and murdered oh. for entertainment. Oh, baby, if it was for a movie, hell fucking yeah, cunt. I'd let them feed my balls to the fucking dogs. 
You know there's an audience for that, right? For what? I call it roll call porn. Legit, it's like gold porn, but it's fucking real. Have you have you even seen how many people watch others who are filmed committing suicide, getting tortured, beheaded and raped? Yeah. You're fucking naive. The whole of the internet. If you go on a site like Crazy Shit, The YNC, Best Score, or even fucking YouTube, you will get all of that cunt. Even kids can watch all of that shit and they fucking do. You know how many people watch a video that gets posted on a site like, like the YNC, fucking YouTube? They're so fucking. Are you even fucking listening? Nope. In the end, Charlotte's Net did not bring anything new or interesting to the table when it comes to extreme cinema. When you strip the film down into its two basic components, it is part found footage and part mixtape. And though some real classics have been birthed out of both of these genres, they are also two genres that are some of the most oversaturated and bloated because they can be so easily made. And unfortunately, when it comes to Charlotte's Net, this appears to be the case. As a found footage film, it is lackluster. It is shot digitally and uses cheap filters to give it an unconvincing aged look. Its narrative of beware of the dark corners of the internet has been long played out. And unfortunately, as a standalone found footage film, it is ultimately forgettable, which is why it relies so heavily on real gore footage to carry the film. Which brings us to the second component of this feature, the real gore mixtape segments, which unfortunately is riddled with a lot of the same problems. The film either references or shows clips which have been circulated and shared within the underground for years. So as a standalone mixtape, it is also ultimately played out and forgettable as well. Lastly, the concept of combining real gore with a traditional film narrative is also nothing new. Films like Last House on Dead End Street and Snuff 102 did this decades before. All of that said, art is subjective. One man's trash is another man's treasure. I know that this film has a strong and loyal cult following behind it already. And if you're one of those people, that's fine. But this just wasn't it for me. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Until next time, this is Cinema's Underbelly. Have you subscribed to Jonathan Doe's new channel Murderabilia Show and tell yet? See authentic true crime relics and the infamous stories behind them. Go on field trip episodes with Doe and friends as they visit real historic crime scene locations. Listen to interviews with real convicted murderers as they explain their crimes in their own words. Meet special guests from the murderabilia community as they offer exclusive access into their personal collections. So what are you waiting for? Support the underground and subscribe today.